Hey guys, years ago I knew I wanted to start a podcast, but I knew nothing about how to get started. Add to that, I am horrible when it comes to technology. Thankfully, Spotify had a platform where I could do everything I needed, super easy, and best of all, super free. You see, Spotify for Podcasters lets me record, edit, distribute right from my phone or computer so I can get everything done in one place. I can also do video episodes as well, which as a trader helps massively if I wanna talk about something on the charts. Lastly, if you're into making money, which you know some of us are, Spotify for Podcasters makes it super easy to monetize in various ways, including ads like this or subscriptions. So for someone who values my time massively and is always focused on efficiency and productivity, Spotify for Podcasters was the perfect fit for me. Give it a try. Oh, and did I mention? It's free. Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about journaling and not your traditional type of journaling, meaning crunching the numbers, but talking about the psychological side of journaling, which is something most traders don't do. And it's one of the reasons that most traders don't ever become more successful than they currently are. Now today's episode comes from, well, an episode of the Trader Coffee Break, which is a weekly show hosted by Jason Greystone and myself. If you're interested in learning more, head over to YouTube, just type in Trader Coffee Break. There are tons of episodes that are talking about the things that you don't often hear on the internet. And make sure you subscribe, that way you don't miss the next live session or the next upload. Today, we've had actually two requests from two different people unknown to each other on this particular <laughs> subject within the last 24 hours so it was a sign for us to say yeah that's definitely the one we should go for and uh, we're going to be talking about journaling now I know chris is in the chat here so i think chris was one of the guys who who requested this topic to you akil and the other guy was navjot man who's also here funnily enough hey, so look at that. <laughs> you guys are going to get a lot of value because this is for you so uh cool we're going to be talking about journaling akil where do we start well, I, I guess we start with the two types of journaling. There's the journaling that most traders, well, maybe most traders don't even know about journaling, but the there's the statistical side of journaling, and then there's the psychological side of journaling. And we're going to talk today more about the psychological side. I think that's where most of the questions lie. But just to kind of give a little bit of a background, the statistical side of journaling is your your tracking of data, your data collection. So if you're familiar with your, your back testing, if you're familiar with kind of just having a, a trade log or a spreadsheet, that's where you're typing in and digging into the numbers where it's like entry day, day of week, time of day, you know, where you got involved that price point, where you're going to get out at, whether it's a target yeah. or an exit, you know, did you hit, did you lose? stuff like that, whatever other elements you're tracking of the trade, maximum favorable excursion, maximum adverse excursion, maybe alternative stops or targets. Um, that's going to be the type of stuff that, again, I don't think most traders do, but that's what most traders typically think of when they hear about journaling. Yeah. The side that often goes kind of unnoticed is the psychological side. I know we spoke about this before on the, um, <laughs> here on the Trader Coffee Break, but, you know, getting to the next level of trading is difficult, right? There's no boss. There's no one kind of evaluating you. You don't have like a, you know, a meeting at the end of each month with your supervisor that says, Hey, here's what you did good. Here's what you did poorly. Here's how you can get better. It's kind of on you. And what happens with most traders is they fall asleep. They reach a certain level of success, um, which is typically kind of just avoiding failure. Yeah. And then they stay that they don't, they stay there. They don't really do things to make them improve. And, and, <laughs> The psychological side of the journaling, that's how you're going to find what's missing or what needs to be improved or what you're doing good that you can gain confidence of off of in your trading, which is going to allow you to go to the next level. And yeah. that is kind of, you know, a, a, an under talked about part of becoming uh, successful or becoming more successful. I would yeah. say. I think um, with with journaling, first of all, the 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 importance of doing it is it's kind of your your way of back testing your trading performance and and that's split into two as akil just said it's not just if you think of technical analysis tech the technical analysis of your journaling is the numbers and making sure you know the numbers don't lie and the pnl adds up and the profit and loss you know your your, your numbers are right but the mm -hmm. The fundamental analysis, I guess, is your mental, your emotional, your human error, your ability, your mindset, you know, your 
uh, execution, all of those things are very intangible and they need to be measured and reviewed and journaled as well. So, you know, you have to do both of those things if you're to develop and to grow as a trader. If you're, if you're not doing that, you're not measuring it, then you could get a year, two years down the line and really be in a situation where you don't know what you've got to do next. And I've had so many messages and emails. Akil, I worked out that since we've been doing this or since I've been, last seven years, I've had 13,600 emails from traders. And that's crazy. Like that is crazy. That's crazy. And why do, why do we do this again? <laughs> <laughs> are we supposed to have freedom of time like yeah right yeah but but in those thirteen thousand six hundred emails what i realized is there's a lot of common patterns and one of them is i see that two years down the line look oh yeah i'm just don't feel like i'm getting it anywhere with it and and then the first thing i go to is well you know what's your journaling like what is your what does the journal say about your numbers and your ability you know, and really that's it. That's that's all we're looking to measure and, and improve on. And if you haven't got a journal or a document or some kind of diary that, that documents that, you how can you expect to grow? So I guess some of the things that we can <clears throat> talk about here are what technicals to measure and what mental and kind of human error things to to measure. And, you know, the, as you said, Akil, it's, it's, uh, the obvious things are where you got into a trade, where you got out of the trade, the time and date, the stock placement and all the rest of it. But I would really encourage you guys to make sure that you're paying attention to how you're executing the trades as well. You know, like what, what is your approach? How did you feel? Your emotional state? Uh, maybe score yourself um for that day on a scale of one to ten on how greedy or cocky you was you know or how pessimistic and negative you was feeling and score yourself uh on a on a scale of one to ten look we've got some nice graphics playing in the background there <laughs> let's just sort that out it's a good job it's just a news playing right um <laughs> but that's what you want to be doing. I don't know if you'd any, add anything else to, to that, Akil. Yeah, I, I think it, the journaling aspect reminds me of a, a cool thing I saw, I think it was this summer, right? You guys know I'm a, I'm a sports nerd, I'm a track coach, and it was the Athletics World Championship this past summer. Actually, no, this happened at the Olympics um, a couple of years ago where it was this high jumper. And, you know, she's a very good high jumper. Obviously, she's at the Olympics. And they, they kept scrolling back to her. And, and every time after she jumped, she would run back to like a bench. She had this like this little journal, this little diary, and yep. she'd just be writing stuff in there, writing stuff in there. Like no one ever saw this before. So after everything's all said and done, they started asking her like, hey, we saw that after every jump, you know, make or miss, you would what you'd run back and write stuff down. And it was her way of evaluating, evaluating herself. So not only the technicals of like, you know, what she did right or what she did wrong, but she was writing stuff like, how did she feel during the jump? How did she feel yeah. before the jump? How did she feel after it? All these different feelings because she was trying to connect the dots between good jumps and yep. poor jumps. And, I, and I, I guarantee she was able to find a correlation where it's like if she was super nervous or antsy or shaky or not confident before a jump, it probably often ended bad. Or if she was confident, relaxed, you know, had good breathing patterns, whatnot, <laughs> it probably ended well. And like you mentioned, we can do the same thing in trading, right? We are, you know, if we can track how we feel, and I always put like a little section, I, I have a, a note side at the end of my kind of my, my data spreadsheet where I just keep track of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If we can ask ourselves, how do we feel before entering the trade? And if we could ask ourselves, how do we feel during the trade? Or maybe how do we feel after the trade? We can really target a lot of those problems. So if you nerve, if, if you notice that you're nervous before the trade, like man, my hands were shaking, or I, I wasn't quite sure if I was supposed to get involved, or I didn't double check this, right? And you end up making a mistake during that yeah. trade. Well, you probably know why. Or if you're in a trade and you notice, like, hey, I was in this trade and I was looking at the charts every five minutes. And every time I looked at it, I did this and I was listening to news in the background. The news kept saying yeah. I should be in the opposite direction or I was going through Twitter and Twitter said this and or <laughs> someone reached out and Twitter said, oh, you're short to Euro dollar, you're an idiot. Write that stuff down because you're probably in some fashion influenced by that. Or yeah. 
if you had a losing trade and, and you after the trade loss or after the trade won, you wrote down that, hey, you know, oh, yeah, feeling invincible, never felt this good before, feel horrible. Well, if you rush into the next trade or if you do a revenge trade after that, there's probably a good chance that that next trade was caused by the previous trade. Yeah. So if you can write those things down on a consistent basis, and then when you do your bigger review, the same you, same way you review your technicals and, and whatnot, you can start putting the pieces together where it's like, man, I always seem to make a trading mistake after I do this on the previous yeah. trade. And then you can start implementing solutions where it's like, hey, take a five minute break or hey, you know, go to the gym or run, like do something yeah. to kind of, you know, get a disconnect, a pattern interrupt before returning to the market. So, yeah. you know, stuff like that was, is key in, in, in journaling, in my opinion. I thought it was a cool story to see that Olympic athlete, the, the best of the best in the world, still do that approach. Yeah, and, and it does. It's, it, you start to see patterns emerge on when you're greedy, you have this kind of result. And when you're kind of a bit cocky and or fearful maybe you have a different result and you start to see those patterns and you can start to patch them up and, and optimize them also things like are you lazy are you too lazy to do like full analysis things like that did you really go in and commit and give your full analysis to the pair or did you quickly rush over you know ask yourself those questions things like um you know, things like uh the maximum loss on your trade did you go above the maximum loss yeah, on your trade one. you know if you've set a one percent max risk did you go above that and how much of that loss can you now attribute towards you know not trading your plan flawlessly things like um missed entries going through and making sure that you didn't miss any entries on the on the pairs that you should have been in and also a big one is execution error so like the trades that you should have been in did you execute them as per your plan and those if you're just asking yourself like those three or four questions you're going to discover a lot about where your profits are going and really what you want to be doing is approximating a what we call you know zero basically you don't want you don't want to say yes to any of those you want to basically not be winning too many or winning more than you should and you don't want to be losing more than you should you want to be winning what you expect to win based on your plan and every time that you win more as a result of breaking your plan that's an error and if every time you lose more as a result of breaking your plan that's an error make sense and your job as a professional trader is to work towards producing zero errors and that is very difficult and it's ongoing and it's you know human error and human emotion and chemicals in our body make us feel differently from time to time and that is one of the hardest things you know that's why the psychology part of trading is so hard which is all more the reason to make sure that you're journaling not just for the technicals and the numbers and the black and white and the p l and the, the the figures but also your performance because you're the vehicle you're the one creating the profit and if there's something wrong with a car you're not going to get to the this destination are you you know and you might not know why you might break down somewhere and think now what you know i'm not really a i'm not really a mechanic but if you have all these journaled notes at least you can go ah well you know, I did notice this thing happening or that wasn't quite right. Or, you know, there's a pattern here. Make sense? Let us know in your comments if you, yeah. uh, if you journal now what you journal and what you've discovered from journaling. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, and we had a good conversation this morning in uh, the live trading room about, about news. And, and that's another thing that could be journaled as well. And I can give you a, a personal experience with me. So I was... I brought, I was brought up, my mentor taught me, you know, it's either technical or fundamental, right? Whatever side you're on, you're 100% on that side. So I came to the market um, as a day trader, like, hey, I'm not going to avoid any news. I'm trading through everything. And I, I learned a valuable lesson that that's not necessarily the smartest thing. So another thing that you can track in your, your trading with your journaling is like, Let's say some type of sporadic move happened. Let's say you got whipsawed to death where you're you're in a trade and then like 8.30 comes or whatever time it is and then it stops you out and it goes in your, your desired direction without you being involved and you're sitting there, you're pissed off, you're angry, right? 
you have yeah. to ask yourself, okay, what caused that move? And I would go back and do that. And I'd be like, every, you know, oh, ECB press conference happened. Oh, ECB press conference happened. Well, ECB press conference happened. And then finally I smartened up where I did a review and I said, wait a minute. Every time this ECB press conference happens, the markets go bonkers, they go up, they go down, and they end up back where they started. But I'm collateral damage in that because I have this little small day trading position on where, you know, a 20 pip difference one way or another is me being stopped out. So if you consistently review that as well, well, now you can add things that allows you to avoid certain dangerous situations. So, you know, this Friday we have non-farms coming up, right? If you notice that, hey, every time non-farm payrolls comes, the market goes bonkers and it's not necessarily a good place for me to trade because maybe I've gotten slaughtered in the past. Well, you review your notes and if you see, hey, trade was stopped out news event, trade was stopped out non-farm news event, trade was stopped out non-farm news event. Well, now maybe you smarten up and you just say, hey, I'm just going to avoid those Fridays, or I'm going to avoid actively trading during yeah. ECB press conference or interest rates decisions or presidential elections, you name it, but you'll have that information where you can go back and put the clues together where you're like, Hey, and there's no different in trading, right? Trading role, you know, it's all probabilities where it's like, Hey, when I see a double bottom occur at structure with the RSI overbought, there's a 60% probability of market reversing. You can do the same thing where it's like, hey, when a non-farm payroll comes out on Friday, there's a 90% chance of this ruining my trade. Yeah. And you say, you know what? I just want to avoid those situations. And then it's a little bit of addition by um, subtraction where you're just taking yeah. yourself out of the dangerous periods of the market. And you're probably also avoiding a psychological error there as well, because if you're anything totally. like me, you get skunked out of a market because of some BS, you want to get back involved. And, you know, then it just ends yeah. up again, getting further from that zero line and making more mistakes. So, yeah. you know, news or outside related events, maybe you had to leave work early or a family emergency, like stuff like that is important as well to track. Yeah, I think it's a really good point that you make. And, and it's not even that difficult. Like if, with non-farms and things like that, if it's not even 90%. If you go through and see that more than 50% of the time you lose during those sessions, easy. Just get rid of it. Don't, don't trade on those days. Like it's a very easy decision to make uh, if it's not profitable for you to trade on those sessions. Um, one of the questions I got around journaling was about the software packages available out there and i know there's a lot of good software packages i think there's like trader journals there's i think there's one called edge wonk that's been pretty popular over the years and there's um trade trade sat do one oh, actually that's the edge wonk one yeah and there's plenty of those my advice though is if you can't be bothered to do it manually then don't use those systems if you want more like if you're doing it manually and you're very professional and you know yourself well and you know how to journal and then you just want more kind of in-depth metrics and stuff and some cool features to be able to break down patterns then yes use it but if you can't be bothered to do it manually then i would highly strongly recommend that you don't start with those automated softwares because it's just gonna it's almost going to mask uh, the problem, uh, if that makes sense. And I, I kind of want to, my final thought on this really is the numbers don't lie. And whenever I see traders struggling, it's down to two things. One, their system isn't profitable and that isn't profitable. And the reason they're trading it is because they haven't tested it. <laughs> and the reason they haven't tested it is because they can't be bothered. And that is just the mathematical edge. But the biggest reason that traders fail is the psychological edge. And that is because they haven't back tested themselves. You know, they don't know themselves and how they perform and how their emotions uh, dictate their trading decisions and how it affects their trading performance. And almost 90%, I would say more than 90% of the time, it is down to not having a journal on their own performance, knowing themselves. So you want to know your numbers and you want to know yourself. And ultimately, even if you just do that for 12 months, you might come out of that 12 months and go, do you know what? I know myself better than ever before now. And I know that this system doesn't fit my personality and you change the system. And immediately from changing the system, because you've done all that work, you'll be profitable within months because you've done all of that. Like you've really got to know 
yourself and how the system resonates with you and how it's you know adaptive to your personality and your lifestyle so you can literally go do you know what i figured out i don't like this strategy i want to get rid of it i want this one and you can make that profitable very quickly because you know yourself better i think that's fair and i've i've, I've seen that i've seen that happen so um let us know in the comments if you've if you've discovered anything like that how are you switching between multi-time frame analysis during back testing uh kills answered that one please discuss one day <laughs> on how to test back back testing oh cts back to test testing yeah we could talk for a, a week on that. that's uh <laughs> that's a more involved one there's a lot of moving pieces i get our yeah. advice for that just to give you a quick version is you know we always talk about a pre-back testing phase um you know, you don't want to hop right into back testing and data crunching because you typically you're, you're testing, but you don't really know what you're looking for. And you're just going to do it like 80 million times. Always do a pre back testing phase where you're just spending time in the market. We call it the, the sandbox or the playground where you're being creative. You're asking questions, you're developing ideas, you're getting kind of a, a visual test of it. And you're kind of seeing the stuff right away that blatantly works, blatantly doesn't work, the things that you like, the things that you require. And then by the time you get to the actual back testing phase, right, at least you have kind of a, a, a base idea of what do I, what do I, uh, what I want to pay attention to. And you can filter out from there. And I spoke about this the other day with back testing, not to get too much off topic, but one of the biggest faults I had in my trading career, and it goes off what you mentioned, is even after I accepted the fact that I had the back test, right, I only went into back testing looking for the answer. So I wasn't back testing to be creative. I wasn't back testing to develop a strategy that fit versus my personality. I just wanted to make money. So I back tested as just kind of like a means to an end. Like I'm just doing this because I, my mentor says I have to before I can trade. And because of that, I never actually got any value out of back testing. I didn't yeah. really care about the psychological battles. I literally just did X amount of trades, X amount of years and saw if it was profitable or not. And then trade it live and got ruined because I didn't believe in it. I didn't trust it. I never looked at like max trades loss, any of that stuff. And, you know, it's it, so back testing is important, but it could also be pointless if you don't use it the right way. Absolutely. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll end it there. I don't want to, that's a, another conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that's, um, we could do another whole oh, thanks, Chris. session on that for sure. Um, which leads us to say, uh, if you're enjoying these sessions, let us know. Subscribe to the channel. I think we're nearly a thousand, so maybe at a thousand we'll do a live Q and A or something like that, something special. Um, Seventy six percent of the people that watch this channel aren't subscribed, believe it or not. So Ooh. that's that's interesting. Um, so get subscribing. Get subscribing. Um, and that's it. And if you want to hear about any other topic, let us know in the comments. Uh, Akil, anything else? No, I just I, I want to thank Chris for the that says uh, you guys are, are the best so transparent in your trading and education. And, and we, we we take pride in that. That's something that, you know, we set out to do. That's why we, we started. first started. Yeah, because there wasn't enough of that out there. There's a bunch of junk and we both found it very difficult to initially learn how to trade because we felt that no one was being honest and we don't yeah. want to hear the fluff. We want to hear kind of the the harsh realities of us, just like any, any entrepreneur out there, they tell you, Oh, entrepreneurship is easy to start a business and you'll be fine. Like the, the truth is it sucks. Um, yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. So we kind of set forth on, Hey, we want to do the best we can to provide you guys with the best opportunity to succeed. And, and that doesn't come by telling you what you want to hear necessarily. It comes no. from telling you what you need to hear. And I think, you know, it's a little bit of pain at first, a little bit of a reality check, a, a harsh little, slap in the face Definitely. but bigger picture it pays off massively because you guys are at a better starting point than we were at yeah. um and now it's all up to effort are you willing to kind of go through that journey and follow through with it long time if you want to be successful and hopefully we can be examples of what that looks like and and continue to inspire and you guys can continue to inspire the next generation as well so Amazing. appreciate it that's that's the main goal out here yeah. as far as the teaching side we don't like the 13,000 emails, but like if, <laughs> if one of them helps someone out, then, uh, you know, that's, that's how we know it's worth it. So yeah. thank you. Thank Amazing. You we really appreciate that. And Akil speaks on behalf of me as well and everyone at Tier 1s. Hope you guys enjoyed the topic. Remember, Jason Greystone and myself, we are out there on social media. Watch for the fakes, but find the real us. Ask us questions and what you ask typically becomes episodes of the Trader Coffee Break or the Trading Coach Podcast. 
So don't feel shy, don't feel ashamed. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Ask away, and if it's good, we will address it.